So hi, everyone. Welcome to the Friday edition of 15 Minutes of Positivity. A uh, quick reminder of what we're doing here. Um, the gist of it is uh, we are what we repeatedly do. And so if we, in the mental health context, want to you know, get better at things like mindfulness or attention training or gratitude, well, we got to practice it. So that's that's what we're doing here, thereby stimulating parts of our nervous system that make, make that easier. Um, on Fridays, I like to think of something that will have some staying power through the weekend. So here's here's sort of the, the, the quote of the day that that sets the tone for this. This is Dr. Eugene uh, Lipoff, and he's a he's a pioneer in the world of mental health, doing some pretty innovative treatments. And he makes this point here: misrepresenting a problem is a massive problem in itself. Call an injury what it is and you can address it and heal it properly. And what he's referring to is, um, I think, a pretty uh, important paradigm shift, especially in the world of, of you know, that, that I work in, that has to do with this idea of, you know, we use this term post-traumatic stress disorder pretty frequently, um, PTSD. We also talk about general anxiety disorder. We talk about major depressive disorder. And there's this idea in there that, you know, disorder is basically referring to a pathology, right? There's something bra wrong or broken that needs fixing. And so what Leapoff is referring to is, is suggesting that we actually start referring to this as post-traumatic stress injury rather than a disorder. And there's a pretty significant, I think, not just a, a semantic shift there, but a, but a paradigm shift as to how we, how we think about this. One of the tools we use in the clinic when we first, um, meet patients is this tool called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Questionnaire. And it basically tries to identify um, prior to the age of 18, what our patients, you know, whether or not they've experienced any or more of these uh, types of situations. And it turns out that statistically, if you score a four or higher on the ACE score, the probability that you will run into issues like diabetes, heart disease, suicidality, depression, and so forth, really grows significantly. So go figure, you know, back to this idea of injury. If our nervous system is, is injured in any or more of these ways, it obviously leaves a, a lasting impression and impact on us. So the question is, how do we heal that injury and I would suggest rather than labeling it as a disorder, if we view it through the lens of something that is um, that can be addressed, something that can be healed, um, we stand a better chance of, of making that shift. Here's a picture of my son. This is, uh, he's, he's a fair bit older now. But, you know, I look at this picture and what I see here is this really tender, vulnerable um sponge right his nervous system is like a sponge to the outside world primarily his parents his his sister his his community at large and what he's picking up during these key developmental years is in fact uh creating the footprint that he's going to have for for his mental health moving forward so if there are any of those you know insults that that or those injuries that happen at this stage in the game he's going to obviously be at a massive disadvantage um so my suggestion here, and we'll do this practice in a second, is to recalibrate this, this definition of what, what is healing, and especially when it comes to anxiety and depression and uh, post-traumatic stress, that rather than having this aversive relationship where we push it away and say, you know, I hate this feeling, I want it to go away, that we cultivate this capacity and meet it with some curiosity and compassion and, and actually um, sort of re reparent or, or help heal ourselves or these younger versions of ourselves. Okay, so enough talking. Let's actually try it out. So as per usual, let's uh, close our eyes. And let's just take 90 seconds to, to arrive. So just noticing your body sitting in a chair or laying in a bed, sitting in your car, or wherever you might be. Yeah, and see if you can just slow things down and simplify where your attention is. Again, a reminder that whatever's happened this morning is done. Whatever you're anticipating is going to happen this afternoon has yet to transpire. So 
we're left with this beautiful simplicity of just right here, right now. I mean, noticing your feet in contact with the ground. Noticing the body breathing. Don't, don't try to change your breath. Just notice the shallow, the deep. Where in the body do you feel breath? You're noticing the belly and chest and nostrils, throat. What we're trying to do is just think up our bodies here right now doing its thing. And just notice where's your mind, where are your thoughts and your attention? See if you can bring it into this moment right now. And I want you to bring to mind someone that you love, someone you care about. Maybe in this memory, I want you to picture them. You're watching them. And if you can recall a time where you noticed that they were stressed and that they were struggling. Maybe they were really sad or upset. Maybe they're really angry, frustrated. Noticing their body language their words, facial expressions. You're watching someone you really care about having a hard time. Notice how what that brings up for you. That's of compassion, curiosity, goodwill. My guess is if you could snap your fingers and just make their suffering go away, you would. But that's, that's not really how life works. And so we're left with our attention, our kindness, our presence. You notice yourself being with this person. Maybe you're holding their hand. Maybe you're just sitting across from them. Now I want you to imagine them as a young child, maybe four, seven, nine years old. And imagine that maybe what they're experiencing right now is a continuation of some struggle that they had that started way back when. And their reaction is really just a continuation of those early difficulties. And there's an innocence to it all, a vulnerability. We have this tendency to forget that grown-ups are really just little kids in big people's bodies but they still have the same triggers and the same wounds. So imagine yourself comforting this young version of your friend. Soothing them, expressing kindness and care. I want you to bring to mind a period of time in your life where you were struggling, or maybe you're struggling right now. And just drop into sort of watching yourself 
as if you were outside of yourself watching yourself going through the struggle, noticing the emotions, the reactions, I want you to imagine yourself today as the adult in the presence of your five-year-old self or your seven-year-old self. Having a hard time, feeling scared. How would you comfort this little being in front of you? What might you say? How might you hold this little version of yourself? Notice how your full attention is on wanting to support and help this little, this little person in front of you. Human beings are so incredibly resilient and we're also so incredibly fragile all at the same time, especially in those early developmental years when the nervous system is just starting to get wired up. Our ability to actually feel genuine love and care and compassion is priceless. And when we don't get it, it leaves an injury, leaves a scar. I think that's what lots of us are dealing with as adults when we Give these labels of depression and anxiety and PTSD to the experiences that we're having. This is an invitation for maybe this weekend to practice this form of self-compassion. Um, so when you feel stressed out or if you just notice yourself feeling a little vulnerable, maybe put your hand on your, on your heart, on your chest, and just drop into this place of imagining yourself soothing a younger version of yourself, a five-year-old or a seven-year-old. Just go with your natural instinct of how you might do that and see what happens. Take a deep breath in. Long exhale. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Another deep inhale. Long exhale through the mouth. Again, hold for five, four, three, two, one. One, go ahead and open your eyes. Let your body breathe on its own. And yeah, I hope this, hope this is a you know, useful tool to set the tone for the weekend. If you bump into, into any, any struggles and also just remembering it's, you know, being supportive and compassionate towards others is also a, a, a great way to heal ourselves. So hope that was useful. I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone wants to connect. Otherwise, have a great weekend, everyone. Great seeing you.